The book starts off with an example of a, like a critical thinking exercise. So who believes that the moon affects behavior? So think about that for a second. Does the moon affect behavior? When I was a kid, my mom, she was a mental health professional, and she was always like, oh, no, it's a full moon tonight. It's going to be havoc at the facility. So nearly 81% of mental health professionals believe that the moon affects behavior, 81%. And many college students do as well, somewhere between 40 and 45, according to studies. Think about this critically. What do you think? Do you think that people behave abnormally during a full moon? And somewhat relatedly, is one theory just as good as another theory? I want you to kind of think about that throughout the chapter. Is one theory just as good as another theory? The truth is that the moon does not cause people to behave abnormally. Psychiatric admissions do not increase during a full moon, and a full moon does not lead to more suicides. In a review of 37 different studies, they found no good evidence that any phase of the moon increased abnormal behavior. So what's going on here? Why would we think that then? If there's all these studies that show that it does not affect behavior, why do so many people believe that it does? This question at the heart of it is, where do your opinions come from? And so people have what they call common sense beliefs that we use to explain behaviors and mental states before you even study psychology. Many of your ideas come from the culture and from your personal experience. In some cases, these mental shortcuts, you're programmed with those shortcuts from the culture, from experience, etc. Since you have those shortcuts, they are easy to use, and so you go with them. You don't have to think that hard. You can just go with the flow with them. Basically, it's the exact opposite of what critical thinking is, which gets us into the next slide. The purpose of critical thinking. Critical thinking teaches you how to think, not what to think. So we're not trying to convince you of anything here. When we talk about critical thinking, we're trying to get you to think through things on your own, just not to accept things that you've heard from someone else, including the textbook authors, including myself. So you need to think through it on your own and not just accept. Critical thinking, it's an approach that you can use to effectively think about ideas. And there are several components to it here. Critical thinking is reflective thinking. It's involved in evaluating evidence relevant to the claim so that you can reach a well-reasoned conclusion. Another way to think about it, critical thinking is reasonable, reflective thinking that is focused on deciding what to do or what to believe. As an example, should I take this supplement to help with a cold? That is a critical thinking question. To break these down a little bit, Reflective thinking, it refers to thinking about thinking. So this is a really cool idea to me. It's kind of like metacognition. You are essentially looking at yourself. As an example, if you're telling someone to take a medication for some kind of ailment um, and you're not a doctor, you have to think and realize, hey, I didn't go to medical school. I'm not an expert in this area. Maybe I shouldn't be giving advice. But to think that, you have to think about your thinking. On the evaluating evidence, this refers to examining the reasons that you support or do not support a claim. If your friend is giving you medical advice contrary to your doctor, who should you believe when you're evaluating those claims? The medical doctor, the person that's trained in that, the person that has experience, or your friend, you know, perhaps another college student. And finally, on the well-reasoned conclusions, the phrase, so that it, a well-reasoned conclusion can be drawn from the evidence, means that the thinking is sound, logical, and fair. For example, a well-reasoned conclusion might be a correct inference, a sound judgment, decision, or an accurate diagnosis of someone. All right, that'll get us started on the next slide. We'll kind of get into the history of critical thinking and uh, what kind of claims you should accept and about theories, different theories and um, how to evaluate them.